So yeah, my, uh, Captain Matthew Hoff um, here at Task Force Convention Center. And here initially to set up the warehouse operations for Convention Center to support um, an alternate care facility and working towards different avenues for staff, staff supplies as well as medical supplies and a way to support and receive patients that are um, suspect of COVID-19. And what kind of things specifically will our folks be doing to support that? Um, as if you can see in the background, it's kind of getting and, and organizing supplies and then furnishing the supplies in the rooms and then um, allowing the medical staff to have the bare minimums to support the patients. Um, and we're still ongoing to figure out the additional personnel needed to su do sustained operations. So some of the lessons learned is uh, initially coming in as the kind of the warehouse logistics and we've had to flex on site a few times uh, to support the whole operation at, uh, and then and then as we lean forward to help set up the next team for success. I mean really the the the, the team here is has been a fantastic attitude and a, an amazing shift of focus and and taking off 200 pieces of equipment first thing this morning is and just making it happen is just huge. So I'm looking forward to uh, the additional support coming down the line. And just like any military operations, uh, we adapt and overcome. My name is Staff Sergeant Ibarra. Um, I, my original unit is 947th Engineer Company. I'm here today uh, as part of the Task Force uh, Convention Center. And today we're working on kind of prepping this lower level of the Convention Center for um, warehouse use. So we're setting it up for incoming supplies for um, upstairs and potentially to outlying areas. Um, we're also setting up and trying to organize it to kind of do it as most efficiently as possible. Today we've gotten a, one truck in, we're probably gonna get another one here shortly and just kind of developing like the, uh, the, the structure that this, this whole system is gonna run off of here going forward. So on the floor we have this, uh, this uh, high mill uh, plastic it's to keep our, because we're going to be running pallet jacks and pallets across it and to help protect the, uh, the convention center um, from all the use that we're going to be putting it through. We're trying to, we're trying to basically make the least amount of impact on what, uh, while we're here um, using this facility to help out the others. So this stuff, this plastic that we have on the ground is going to protect it from the pallets that we set down and the heavy pallet jacks that we run through here. Um, a lot of it's medical, uh, mainly uh, medical supplies. This section right here is going to be like the big bulk stuff. Like back here we have some of the uh, hospital beds, uh, these bo boxes right here, I believe are crash carts that are coming in and basically just the stuff that we can't store in our, in our smaller, you know, more secure area. Um, we got about 74 packs here, um, anywhere from, I believe we have five different uh, units. We have the 947th, MPs, um, Army Band, we have, um, we're working with Air Force civilians and I believe there's a couple of uh, Army uh, unit, uh, National Guard units that are along with, I lost track of all the numbers on that one. Um, but yeah, like I said, we've been here for two days. Um, we're kind of just picking up as we're going. Um, so far, guys have been really good about, uh, you know, as soon as they get, get a job in, on it, so they're hungry to start getting things rolling, which is really good. We got clearance to open those. We're gonna do inventory hopefully this week. And we're figuring out a plan of what we wanna do with those as far as with the four different sites that are being talked about. So that's, uh, that's a moving target as, as of right now. So. There we so here's a couple setup rooms. You have a cot, table, and trash can. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. IV pole. <laughs> She's like, what are
it's a fantastic uh, example of partnering and teamwork and communication. Questions? So, so start to finish. From, from the moment you started until D and C will be turned over in 10 days? Correct. Is that right? Amazing. Correct. How many beds are in C and D? So this is 700, 350 each. Wow. <clears throat> okay, the entire, the entire floor will hold 2,000. Mm -hmm. We have a ratio of one nurse per 10 people. So we have to have equipped, we have to have uh, facilities for 500 nurses at any one time. Right. The teamwork is unbelievable, okay? And no one has got a parochial bone one way or the other. It's how do we get this thing up and running? And we, the Corps of Engineers, are working for the mayor of Denver and we're working for the governor of Colorado here. Uh, but it's side by side with FEMA, with HHS, and with unbelievable people here in the city. I mean, it's everybody pulling together. And then we've got an unbelievable contractor base, okay? We've got uh, ECC's doing a good job here. Uh, and the other one we're building, we've got another big contractor. And whether it's the mayor working up through uh, the political channel or it's us working it up through, you know, our leadership, we're all committed to getting this facility done. We've got the smartest guys in the Corps of Engineers out here. What I've seen here today makes me awfully proud to not only be a Denverite but also an American and to see the great art, you know, craftsmanship and, and industrial leadership and, and expertise uh, really happen uh, very quickly, but professionally and expertly. Uh, for all of us and, and God forbid that we even have to use this one time. I hope all this work was for not quite honestly and that we were able to successfully uh, blunt this virus and its impact on our community uh, but we know that uh, we had to prepare for it and I appreciate you all leaning in and taking it seriously. All the contractors, the Army Corps of Engineers uh, stepping in and uh, for you Lieutenant Colonel, uh, General, excuse me, for your leadership and for you, your service to our country. Uh, we are grateful to all of you, um, and uh, thank you for what you've done. Thank you for the people on behalf of the people of Denver, and thank you on behalf of the United States of America. So we'd be remiss if we didn't thank the guard. Oh yes. these guys are phenomenal. They've been flying us around all day, <laughs> and you'd be amazed that on yeah. every one of these, the guard a lot of times is the guys that are putting the beds in. They're doing a lot of the other yeah. manual labor. I'm not going to try to sign Mike up for anything, but every <laughs> single time, well, that's okay. They already have. It's all good. Every time they see a gap, yeah. they are in that gap before they're even asked. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, we are great partners with the guard in uh, disaster response. And Mike, thanks for your leadership and everything you're doing. You bet, sir. Thank you. Larry, thank you very much. You yeah, but sir, the thing that's, that makes all of us feel good, I think, is that, you know, we could build the barracks at Fort Carson, and if we're a couple months late, you know, the soldiers will be okay, and they'll get the new barracks. But <laughs> this is a noble calling, and that you're actually in here building medical facilities that maybe we have the potential to save lives. Yeah. And whether it happens or not, the main thing is, is that, you know, you've allowed us the opportunity to be part of your team, yeah. just to be able to be standing by and uh, making sure that Nobody is, uh, nobody's going to be put at risk. Yeah, I appreciate that. Okay, well look, I got too many guys standing around. I need them to get back to work, right? <laughs> Thank y'all very much. Thank you, General. Okay, sounds good. Thank you all very much. How long does it take to make one of those right there? Uh, a couple minutes. Okay. How many do you make a day, you think? Uh, wow. This is not something that is hardly ever, if ever, done. This may be the first time it has been done where the architect is actually checking the build before we put drywall up. What that's done is increased our speed because we don't have any mistakes. They need to be reloaded. We have a, a main pharmacy that is managed by a pharmaceutical company downstairs in 602. They're doing all the supply upward to the individual rooms, lobbies, pharmacies. This is a finished patient room with a nurse call light, a hand sanitizer, a curtain for privacy, so the other one's a mock-up with like a yeah. plastic. See in here, you got a regular drywall now. Correct. You yeah. Cover around the light. You've got your oxygen. Mm -hmm. You've got your nurse call. You've got your power supply. This is solid. This is done. Wow. So, part of the National Guard who is standing up this facility, we are working out the logistics with them because they will be providing to the nurses on site. Sure. The way we get dirty linens in and out the way we would get clean food in and dirty trays, right. use food out. Three guys, so no slides, right? <laughs> just, let's just hammer this out. We have the staff sessions, right? We're gonna talk about what's going on and what, what's happening, what, ha what happened, what's happening, and what's gonna happen, okay? So those are the big key things. 
So the key of this thing is to be brief, be brilliant, and be gone. All right? This is not your 10 minutes of fame as a time commander if you'd like that I can schedule this. So, uh, Mr. Massey, we'll start with the staff sections that go around. So we'll start with the one. So, right, so where do you start? Sergeant Rivera. And uh, right now, we're expecting to get new helmets and positive radios, but time is still to be determined.